Four stripes to me in this city, and that, and that's 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 from. If you want to talk about street shit, ain't no nigga out here did it like me. I don't care. I'm in a I'm in an island by myself. I don't care. When it comes to like rapping and shit, yeah, they might be me. Okay. <laughs> but when it comes to trapping and making it happen, yeah, pulling up like. <laughs> Big dog. Big dog. Yeah, this gonna be fun. I'm gonna have a good time, man. Cause look, really, I've been quiet for a long time. Humble, you know what I'm saying? Letting these folks have their way. But I feel like it's about time for a challenge. <laughs> you know what I'm look like a nigga playing bumper cars in that motherfucker. This bitch scratched all up. Seats all broke. The handles on the door broke. So I'm like, man, how the fuck did you do this to the van, my nigga? He going back and forth. I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, nigga, you fucking know. Y'all niggas been for this shit. Chill Josh smoke ass, you know, Marcus and Chill Josh, they come back like two little kids. Happy as a motherfucker. So I tell him, but the nigga break out and tell me, man, fuck this shit. Y'all need me more than I need y'all. <laughs> I was like, what? So, you know, Marcus, my little brother, I love him to death, but that right there hurt me. Yeah. Because we had been put blood, sweat, tears, and thousands and thousands. Now, mind you, we put 150 in the killer. 250 in the office. You know what I'm saying? And when I tell you, bro, like I said, I, I paid for DJ Drummer to come down, paid for him to do the tape. That was 40 grand by itself. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about, you're, you know, it's just too much shit. Marcus had, he just lost, he lost a Braylon watch that I had, 20 grand. A yellow, all yellow gold Braylon watch. Bitch, come, we in Vegas. We had that hangover suite. We had all flew out there with it. We had about 90 grand. This, not, this ain't no cap on it. We had about 90,000. We run out of money after the third day. So we, don't, we, we ain't got no money. So I tell Marcus, hey, bro, I need you to buy me some money out here. So we call three niggas, get $9,900 a piece out of Vegas. Cause we got a lot of money. Marcus fly in. He get there, bring us the money, we get the money, whatever the case may be. Yeah, we had some bitches in the pool, I mean, in the jacuzzi. Bitch like, can I wear your watch? Let me try it on, take a picture. Now, mind you, I'm over here, he wearing that motherfucker. Bitch walk out the room with the thing. Marcus running through the casino, the Caesars Palace, in his boxes. <laughs> trying to get it. Trying to get the watch back, because he know I'm gonna be hot. Security call. Now, mind you, we in the baddest motherfucker there. You know, this suite probably $4,000 a night. You know what I'm saying? So they call Mr. Ramirez. You have to come get uh, your guy down here. He calling my phone. They trying to kill me. They trying. They running around the hotel trying to shoot his ass with a tank gun. In the season's balance, my nigga. So, mind you, I'm thinking to myself, like, what the fuck? So I go downstairs looking for him. I'm like, bro, come back. He's like, I ain't coming back. They trying to kill me. So I finally see him out there. He in his boxes, my nigga. In the front of the season's balance. I walk him back in, he punched the fuck that bitch, the bitch of 12,000. He made he, lost, pay for he made, he lost the watch. Oh, fuck! I'm talking about, about a 10 foot bitch in the, in the room. He punched that motherfucker, shattered <laughs> We get back, he tell us he needed us more than we needed him. So I was like, man, fuck it. So I started, J Bone tell me, man, Joy, let's push this money. That motherfucker started rolling. And shit, it just showed me. Shit, like Slim said, bet on yourself. Cause I'm talking about as soon as Molly came out, I didn't have to do nothing. I didn't want it on the internet because I was trying to build a, 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 a email place. Yeah. So I was thinking, if I don't put it, this is how I thought of myself. I was like, no, nah, I ain't putting it on the internet. Every DJ got to call me. That's how I built at the yeah. time. But they was hitting me. So I was building an email blast slowly by show. Because I feel like once I build this email blast, every time I get a record, I can just drop it in there, drop it in there and everybody can get it, right? So, <laughs> you know, and he come serve the strip club, he brought that record, he moved from there. And it was like, when I came back with strip club, it was on every label in America was trying to block me out. So you came, I'm telling you, in the game, straight from the streets. Great. Right. <laughs> look, I get blown out by every label, right? So, you know me, I'm just the type of nigga, man. If I need DJ tips, I'ma call a DJ. I'ma call somebody who's been through this experience right. and see what's up. So I'm at, I'm at uh, Universal first. I call Slim. Hey, fool, they trying to do this, that. Hey, kid, they'll give you a million dollars. <laughs> Fuck them, kid, because I'm telling you, when you, whatever they give you, you better be satisfied with that because you ain't gonna get shit else. Yeah. Now, mind you, 
the slim area and the soft walking area is a big shallow gap in between. That's why. Sure. See, I was in an era where it was in between. You had to have money to be a successful rapper and the viral. Soldier Boy and the viral. Right, 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 right. So in my trend, in, in where I was at, the labels was confused. They didn't, they didn't quite know how they wanted to do it at that time. You know what I'm saying? So. Like, they weren't giving them million dollar deals no more because the viral, the internet right. was starting to kill the money. So, he, when he went to labels, they was giving 20 million. When, when I go to the label, half a million is great. Right, right, right. But you're not knowing that because I don't know that. And then I'm having money. So, I'm in that motherfucker. I got that shit on me. And at every label, at this time, every label calling, looking for me, right? So, I'm capping. You know what I mean? Sure. They trying to fly me regular. Oh, baby, I don't fly regular right. upgrade. Me first class. He ain't last up that bitch. Uh, kicking, right? So I'm at Universal. I call Slim. I'm like, yeah. He like, man, hey, kid, if you don't get a million, you better be happy with whatever they give you. So he was going to give me 250 So I'm thinking, shit, I got that on. Yeah. I asked Larry. I said, man, I got 250000 in a year. That ain't going to cut it because I'm listening to my big homie. <laughs> but if I would have did it, they would have made me famous. Right, 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 right. right, right. So I'm like, fuck it. So I tell Universal, no, boom. Oh, no, no, I think it was uh, Atlantic. So then Universal fly me out. They like, man, we want to put, uh, 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 what's the nigga with the braid? Uh, uh, he used to be signed with Cash Money too. Uh, Tiger. Tiger. They want to put Tiger on strip club. Tiger? You know, not, not this is Tiger. I love Tiger. But at this time, Tiger on fire. I, yeah, I don't know this. I don't know that Tiger on fire, right? Cause I don't know him, man. I don't know really much about him. So I'm like, nah, I could get Tiger my damn self. <laughs> I, if you, if I'm a sign universe, you gotta put Lil Wayne on. Me. Yeah. And they be like, oh, okay. Well, are you cool with taking Boo Rossini off? And I was like, cool. Can't take Boo Rossini yeah. off. I was like, that's my partner. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we did this together. Why would I take him off? They was like, well, you know, this record, we wanna take Boo off and put Tiger on it, and we gonna push that as your main single. We gonna blow you up. I call Boo. Hey, cool. Shit, they want to take you off the record. But look, you know it's good. Love yeah. it work out. I got you. Oh, good. Oh, shit. All right, good. Well, fuck me then, huh, good. <laughs> fuck me, huh? So you know me. I got to be a real nigga, which today, I just said, fuck you. Go and get your bitch ass off the record. But you know, that's my brother. Like, right, right, right. He couldn't see the blessing right then. You know what I'm saying? And at that time, he probably thought he was just going to get left. You yeah, know, yeah. Or, or pushed back to the side. You know? So... I told them, man, all right, I'll take Tiger, but I ain't taking more. They said, all right, well, send me some more records. I'm like, no records? I ain't no, have no more, no more records. records. <laughs> I only had three records. What the fuck you mean? I didn't have no more records. I had Plug, Strip Club, and Molly. That's it. I didn't have no more. <laughs> so Lavish like, Lavish like, well, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, G. Uh, we got four more labels, so. Universal Republic and we going through all these different uh, places, right? But they all want to take Boo off. So now I'm walking in there, and now I'm tired of being there, really. I'm ready to go home. Yeah. Back to the money. I'm like, nope, I ain't Boo. If you ain't taking Boo off, no. And so Lavish like, bro, you tripping. I'm like, Lavish, I'm not taking them off. They can put somebody else on, but Boo help me with the record. Why would I take them off? You know what I mean? That's why when I be talking to you young niggas and I be trying to explain to y'all, it's not that. Because I know a lot of niggas, like, like even with Lane, like I tried to talk to Lane, like the deal that Megan got, they came to give it to Lane first. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I met with the folks at, uh, at uh, Prospect Park. See, they thought he was signing me. But I told him, no, he not signing me, just like Chilla. Chilla, same situation. When Chilla came, like I'm the reason, like I was making those calls, trying to get Chilla in the situation. Right, right, right. D. Will came, met me, actually was Chetta signing me, I told him no. Then D. Will went like a little snake behind my back and signed him and tried to talk him and keep me off the record. Which, I wasn't even tripping about no money, I told him, I just want to be famous now because I seen what Universal and Def Jam was trying to do with me the first time, you know what I'm saying? Long story short, I hit the nigga all the way in the door, he ended up getting fucked out of everything. You know, I mean, hopefully he good to this day, but he got fucked, right, right, you know right. what I'm saying? D. Will got most of the money. He ain't really get nothing, and he get promoted. You tell him walk to a club right now, and they ain't letting his ass in. Who are you? Get your ass out there. For real. But from Man to Spain, motherfuckers know me, you right, know what right, I'm saying? Right. Because I promoted myself, you know what I'm saying? So, long story short, 
Man, all them different label situations happen, and I shot them bitches down because of that, you know, because of that circumstance. So, you know, I had a long journey that I kind of probably could have been bigger than life, you know what I'm saying? But because of what I did, is the reason why I'm still riding around. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like nothing I did was in vain. Some type of way, this shit gonna come back because I did it from my heart. I ain't turned no label down because I turned out and they were trying to take my partner off. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever the case may be. Whichever. I never was trying to hold him. I was, I was just going to let him get all the money. And I was going to take the wave because I was part of him. I brought him out on Soldier Boy. I'm the one took him to the radio station. I'm the one introduced him to the D-Wheel. Champ was, was the nigga behind him. I had it on my... Uh, it, was, uh, it was registered to me first. Right, right, right. Average took it down so he could have the song. You see what I'm saying? I could have just stolen the song if I really wanted to. You know what I'm saying? But I, I wouldn't know man. You know what I'm saying? Thinking that niggas, after all the years of shit, like what I say, I brought Bo, I brought Chella, I brought Lee with me. Nigga, I was letting these niggas come up to Ohio and shit, hustle with me, give them nigga money, let them niggas see money before they ever thought they could see it. You know what I'm saying? So I thought, you know, the payback, the niggas gonna look out for me. You know what I'm saying? And niggas, instead, let that little bit of light go past and look. Bro, you got everything it take to really, like, really put on for the city and, like, just, look, you got to put it in their face. Right. But where I come from, I can't do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, if I get to flashing too much or doing too much, that shit land me in jail. You see what I'm saying? I like, my shit come out the mud, like, out the streets. So, I, I roll just a little different, you feel me? And like I said, I salute him to the fullest because he, he like the DJ school or what, what in Houston to me. Oh, like, sure. He got everybody back looking, so you know he doing a hell of a role. Now that's just my sure, sure. I feel like he gonna make it. If it's meant for me to do anything, he gonna bring the light back here, and all I gotta do is just do my part. Because right, right, right. they gonna they, they gonna pick up a, 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 a lyricist. They are gonna pick a trap rapper. Right, they right, gonna right. pick up you know like a ludicrous type rapper. You know it, you, they gonna pick each one. They right. do it every time. If you really look at it, bro. They do it every time. Uh, most of these niggas fly. <laughs> like I said, where was these niggas before rap? Like, right, they right. did all this, like, these niggas really saw me before rap. Jesus, got it, bro. Gucci. Before I ever made a record, they knew who I was, you know what I'm saying? So, what I just be saying is, if all these niggas was hustling and getting so much money, why Why I never heard of them? Because I was going to see this city, city, state, never seen these guys. Why? <laughs> Until they had a hit record, I never seen these guys. So, when I explain the losses, it's just, if you if you can hear the losses I took, imagine the type of money I had. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like I tell a person, like, you know, when you, in any other aspect you can go to the bank. In my aspect, I had to trust people. You know what I'm saying? I had to have loyalty amongst friends, family. Like I said, I got burnt more by my family than any nigga I ever did. You, wow. know? you know what I'm saying? And it's just because motherfuckers see you running around. Spending money on dumb shit, they think you got to give away. Right. But I'm counting that shit, and I'm counting how much I got the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? But people don't know that. So, you know, like I tell the motherfucker, man, I really lost two hundred and like twenty two, twenty three thousand. I had it in the car. I had a Toyota Camry and my partner land on them house. And you know, every time I used to hit my licks, I used to go, you know, put the little, my little, yeah. you know, extra money up in the spot, and I let that shit build up. I had like 220 up in there. Same at my mama's house. I had like 220 up in the wild over there. And, you know, I used to try to get them out of a quarter. So I, you know, four quarters a million dollars. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's yeah. how I was looking at it. I get four quarters a million dollars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, out of every spot that I put it in, put the money, something came up missing. If not, you know, just pieces. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I said, at that time, I used to go over there and that, this nigga used to always come in the garage. Oh, I'm just tricking on you. All that whole shit. And something just told me, like, man, this bitch ass nigga being too nosy, man. Get this whole ass nigga. And I used to have, but that's why I fucked up at. I'm 25 years old. This man 40 something. And I'm, hey, take your ass in the house, man. What the fuck you coming out here for? Yeah. Because at that time, I'm helping his mama out more than that nigga helping her. Right? Yeah. You know, I just give her a couple thousand dollars, you know what I'm saying? So I used to do what I wanted to over there, you know what I mean? So he just watching and watching. And she went to the casino one day, and that motherfucking car said, if I. <laughs> Bro, I was sick too. But even that shit I tell you about in the wilderness, like I said, man, I had 450 in a Louis Vuitton, like this one in big brown bag. Right. I had like the 50, 20, 10 at the bottom. I had 130 in, in the hundreds. Boo, Boo had came down here in that black Lamborghini. 
And I was like, man, how the fuck did you get this Lamborghini? Nigga, you ain't in the feds. In my mind, street nigga get a Lamborghini or something, you going to jail. That's what I thought, you know what I'm saying? So I went and talked to my people at uh, AutoNet, because at that time, that's who I was getting to get the car from. He said, man, you bring me the money, give me $5,000, I'll write a check and get it for you and set it up in paperwork. You know what I'm saying? You get you one. And you get you one. No bullshit. I start, I start stacking my money saving. I start putting my money to the side saving. I got to 130. I had 130,000 all 100s. I wrapped it up and put two big rubber bands, broke the Lamborghini money on it. It's on my soul. Put it on that, and I set, set the hundreds on top of the, the other money. Yeah. I, I brought the money there Friday. I had that blue Bentley at the time. So that Friday, I went and dropped the money off there, and I went and jumped on the flight and went to Miami. When I get to Miami, you know, I'm in, I'm in Miami the whole time telling everybody, yeah, bitch. When I get back home, I'm going to cop the lamb, nigga. I'm talking about this was the most exciting time of my life. So I had went to Lamborghini at Houston before, that week before, and I picked out a smoke gray motherfucker with the black top. It was yeah. oh, 120. <laughs> So, I, it was like 120 something, so I figured 130 I'd be good. This way. Uh, I figured 130 I'd be good. Man, I get back from Miami that Sunday. I'm walking, you know, I'm, 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 I ain't go even check the money though, because I know it's there. <laughs> Man, I'm talking about I'm bullshitting that money. I wake up, I go run to go do something. As I'm coming back, I see they got the car sitting out in front, washed up, ready to go. I'm like, yeah, hey, bitch, I'm finna stomp on these niggas next, because at this time, Houston and, and polished as it is. Slim wasn't riding around the Rolls Royce yeah, and shit yeah, at the time. Yeah. You know, he had this shit, but it wasn't flamboyant out right, here right, right, right. like it is now. Man, I get back down to, uh, they got the car out, I call my guy. He like, bring me the money, I'm gonna write the check. And I go in that motherfucking condo, I open the room door, the bag still sitting up, and he just wanted to pick it up, boom, open it, all the hundreds come. <laughs> but the other money there. So I'm going crazy, my nigga. So, you know, the only person that I thought knew how to get in there is me and my baby mother. Right. So, nigga, I, I'm talking about shit. I can't even look at her. I can't even look at her. I'm so, uh, there you go. I can't look at her because I'm thinking she done stole it or something. Right. But I'm thinking to myself, what's she going to do with 130000 You know what I'm saying? So, nigga, I, I called looking for a lot of technical people. I found a place right there on uh, uh, 45 and... Uh, Right man ship. Yeah. I found a little spot, right? Oh, wow. They do a lot of tickets. They pay me six hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars, two questions. So they asked a dumb question, they asked about the money. She started crying, past that motherfucker like a motherfucker. But what I started thinking was really? the fucking maintenance man that came in and my money machine was sitting on the counter. But I was mad at her because I told her, don't be praying to make this week. Don't ever do no service of this bitch. I'll fix it myself. Right. All right. So I was thinking it was the main, but now that I think about it, it was my homeboy, Eddie, who missed me probably. And the reason why I knew it was him, look, after they take the 130, I'm hot. He just ruined my best time of my life. Right. You know what I'm saying? I took it, it was, I took a hundred that was in there. I put it four feet, I mean 425. 25, 25, 25, 25. I put 225s in the comforter and threw it in my spare. I had a spare washer dryer. I put it in there. And then I unbolted my real dryer and put it. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I go open the door, my door unlocked. I look outside, I don't see nobody. So something just told me, man, check my money. Bro, it was 125 in the dryer, 125 on the, on the thing. Somebody just took 125 from there and 125 up. They just playing with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they, that's another 50 gone. That's 180 now, just gone. I don't know where it is, where it's at. So now that's why, I, like I said, I'm going nuts. Cause I don't know, so I don't want to put cameras all around, but I knew they won't come back in cause they knew it was just 50 there. Yeah. They knew I was gonna move it. So that's why I say it had to be my boy. Because, you know, he in jail now. That's why I tell you, I don't have a successful op. All my ops are, if you cross me, you either dead in jail. And yeah. that's on my soul. I don't know no nigga that I know of that's successful out here that did something to me. I don't know one person. Yeah. That's, it, that's on everything. Crazy. So that's why I say like, if you could, if you could take those type of losses and still, like I said, I'm back up now. Got to roll it, put it in the sky. Cause like I said, this motherfucker here was eighty-seven thousand. So I yeah. tell the motherfucker, <laughs> you know, a nigga, this bitch here was fifty-one thousand. So you do the math. My teeth were forty, and the reason why my teeth was forty, cause my teeth was so crooked that I had eleven thousand worth of dental work. <laughs> so I, and then because I want my real teeth to still be there, they put some shit on my teeth. To, so what they want right now, right? Cause and then I'm paying on my veneers. Yeah. So I was gonna keep these for five years and get veneers. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I was paying 
just paying every month on, on my white teeth, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I paid so much to get my shit right. So when they take these out, they can just put mine in. Yeah. But before when, before I did, I went solid. Um, my shit was permanent. Before all them niggas, Sauce Walker, all them, Sauce them calling me. Man, you went permanent on their ass? <laughs> like I said, man, but you gotta think, this is who I am. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. Like my mama never know I was in Boston. They knew I was selling on sell dope from the time I was <laughs> forever. Yeah. On everything. Like I like I said, when my old man went to jail, bro, I was hustling, helping my mama pay the rent and pay the bills when I was in high school. So that's why I said, like it was no doubt. I was when when I was 19 years old, like niggas around here was still doing basic shit. I was already going to Ohio. Yeah. Money. Like I said, I had my first hundred by the time I was 21. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 2021. And you never thought rapping would be. Never, not, not, not a second did I thought I'd be a rapper. I never even was a freestyle at school. Like, I, was, I ain't got it. Both them boys off. Never. 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 So that's why I say this shit just caught a nigga just off guard. But it really was a blessing, though, because a lot of the shit that happened around here, I would have went down with it. Had I not had shit the behind me, keep you know what I'm saying? On. And, and cause see, like all my homeboys, a lot of them, they 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 fall for the number one trap. And the number one trap is trying to live a life that makes you have to sell dope and hustle. Mm -hmm. See, I even when I was hustling, like I bought 18 Woolers. I got a driving education school. You know what I'm saying? I got other shit going on that even when shit like right now the pandemic. I don't gotta hustle and go try to ride no work. Nigga, my business is gonna take care of this shit. Okay. But what fucks everybody else up is that they got the hustle during bad times and good times and everything. They just, you know, that, that, I think that's what keep me from, you know, that separate me from them. You know what I mean? So, that's what I said, man. I don't believe. I'm, 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 I'm the greatest though. I don't like to toot my horn, bro. But I can stand up with my chest out. Everything they tried to help us soft me with, or try to, you know what I'm saying, put a nigga down with, you know what I'm saying, that shit will never check out. Yeah. Like Chris Bacon said, yeah. ETCO, baby, everything check out. Yeah. They can't do nothing but try to salt me, but it won't work. Because it's going to be a real nigga going to back me up. Yeah. From every city, every state. Like I say, I can go anywhere. When I be in Atlanta, they treat me like Houston, right? Yeah. When I'm in Miami, they treat me like Houston. Yeah. Dallas, they treat me like Houston. I don't have to wait no line, none of that shit. They gonna salute me. There's gonna be some gangsters that's gonna look out for me. I ain't never had no real issues. Like I said, you know, you know, I answered them. Yeah. Like I said, it was only one time where I could say, you know, nigga had me worried. And that was the little, the little third ward nigga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those little niggas were savages. Yeah. Al Qaeda. <laughs> like I said, man, the rest of that shit wasn't that. That's crazy. Cause my niggas don't, my niggas really like that. Every nigga, that every nigga around me risk their life every day. Yeah. So what's what's taking one more risk? And then for the kid that put up, put everybody in position, they gonna die by that. That's why I tell people I only need five niggas. Me and five niggas against any nigga on me, they'll lose. Yeah. Because your all mine gonna go. If it come down to it, they gonna go. You don't even have to know. They gonna go to it. If it's smoking out, them niggas know that how I'm gonna be by them if they ain't going. So they can trust me. They coming up with their scheme. They we trying to beat each other to the point. Punch, who gonna get first? Who gonna get first? You know what I'm saying? That went to the circumstances. Right. Like me, it got to be respect. If it ain't respect all on both ends, I ain't bowed down. They that motherfucker got killed. They know that. And I think that's what changed. That's that's what the change happened. It went from like people thinking that, that you know, maybe I maybe hey, I go. Hey, excuse me, yeah. hey, they just got in. They just came back. They say you good. Yeah. Say you good. Hey, yeah. you see that? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what this was for, but, but we gonna fuck that off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's fuck off money. Hey, shout out to my brother Pony. So look, back when I tell you niggas, my niggas gonna go. If life worth five thousand. And I'm telling y'all today, if this right here gonna be spent in a couple days, imagine what your life worth. Real gangster shit, fuck. Man, but fuck all that. Cause life ain't really about bullshit. I don't even like bullshit. Cause bullshit, like I tell you, when I see niggas out here beefing, yeah. that's how I know they ain't really gangsters and they ain't really went through that. Cause ain't nothing cool about getting shot at every day. Right. When you got hit, when you got shot? 
right here? Yeah. Motherfucker, we ain't in right here. We not. Damn, bro. Nah, nah. Let me tell y'all why I'm special. Come here two times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold that for me. Yeah. Oh, look. Get that to point for me. Oh. Let me tell you why that's special. When, I, when they shot me, it was five niggas shooting at me. Yeah. And God had me, my nigga, because something told me grab my pistol. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm walking to the door, I see one nigga come around the corner. As soon as I see him, he up that motherfucker. Boom! Hit me. Dang. Boom. But they thought I had ran toward my door, but really I had just got behind the brick pillar. And so they was still shooting at the door. But that's why, like, like I probably ran out of just start running out of all, like I had so much bullet fragments in my body because they were shooting at that concrete and all that, them fragments was tearing me up, cutting my whole body. So when I went to the hospital, I was leaking blood. And you would have thought that it was like a bunch of bullets, but really what it was, all them bullet fragments had just cut me all up. You know what I'm saying? So long story short, and even right here, that's why I tell the motherfucker I died, came back to life. Like, I was dead, you know what I'm saying? Like, they pumped my chest, got me back to life in the hospital, you know what I'm saying? My mama and them all crying and shit. My kids, you know, I only had my daughter and, and my other, but my two daughters, I ain't had my son. Yeah. They crying and shit, but I didn't realize the blood had dried up on my face. So, man, the craziest part about that situation, my nigga, is I had jumped in my Jeep thinking I was gonna go get these things. So I jumped in my Jeep, I got my pistol, and, and I called my mama. I'm like, mama, this bitch ass nigga shot me. She like, where you at? I was like, I'm in my house. I jumped in my car, tried to leave. I get to the stop sign. I pass out at the stop sign. I don't know how long I was there. None of my neighbors stopped. They just must was blowing and going around. Yeah. My mama drove all the way from the house to my house and got them, found me at the stop sign, leaving. They thought I was dead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The post, that must have got me there. All I remember was waking up and, and Cause they, I had already came, you know, I guess I was already been good. But when I woke up, everybody was in there, you know what I'm saying, in the room. And I could just tell, like, everybody was just so freaked out. Nigga, I get up like, what the fuck y'all crying? Nigga, crying for I'm gonna pop, nigga. I don't know shit like that, stop me, nigga. But one thing I say, man, the reason why I want to do these interviews and shit now is because I feel like I got a lot of unspoken folk stories on my head. Because I don't go in the hood, and, and, and then I don't want credit for it. It's just what happened. So when niggas come at me a certain way, and I come back at them, I don't come back at them and be like, yeah, I told you. Right, right. Nah, I'm just gonna do that shit. And then everybody gonna be like, damn, that nigga, something happened to homie, and then, oh yeah, he was beefing with George, and then that's it. But I'm not gonna go at just me. But like I said, I can tell like, to the masses, they don't be knowing. So when I tell certain, like I can be talking to people, they'll be thinking like, they don't like I'm lying, but it's because they don't know. You know what I'm saying? They, they wasn't getting used to it. They don't know. All they know is what they, you know, what, what they heard about. It. On the industry side, like, you fucking with Jesus, you fucking with Ross, you fucking with uh, Gotti before, you know what I'm saying? Oh, all like, yeah. One thing I can say, all three of them niggas saluted me as a street nigga before a rap. So, you know, Gotti, you know what I'm saying? When he used to come to Houston, he used to hit us up. We used to pull up all white. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, well, I'm talking about when it was seven, but it was 10 people in the crowd. Yeah. We used to be there. Yeah. I, and, and the reason why niggas don't understand why, because I wasn't in Houston. Houston wasn't hip to your goddamn. But because I was hustling in Memphis and right, right, right. Ohio, and I was hearing his music, I was putting my homeboys on this shit, so we was hip to him, yeah. and Houston wasn't. So he was doing shit at the Avon Center, all these different places, and nobody showing up. Yeah. Man, I swear on my soul, when I had them two rosary chains in the Brightland, he had like a big ass, ugly ass chain on, bro. <laughs> and I used to be looking like, what the fuck, where you bought that bullshit at? <laughs> but he had a lamb. So you know, I'm, a, I'm telling you, bro, I was like my son the same way. We was all, I'm always been infatuated with cars. Like, yeah. like I, that's my thing, you know what I'm saying? So he was pulled up in that white lamb when I was out there. I was like, damn, this nigga got a lamb, but he got these goofy, ass, ugly ass chains on. <laughs> so, man, nigga, he grabbed my shit, he was like, man, who did this shit for you? And I was like, King Johnny, blah, blah, blah. And he came back to Houston, and I, I promise you, once he started getting crazy, yo, got it, like, oh, every time I would see him, he would bring me and show me his jury. Yeah. Like, yeah, little nigga. Yeah, little nigga, don't get it twisted. Look at all my shit. Yeah. And that's what, but I salute got it, man. Got it, a real nigga. And got it, don't change. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I said, Ross, you know what I'm saying? He don't change. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like these niggas been in a different type of position. Jesus was under me. 
Jesus had, see, like me, I ain't never had a big home, you know what I'm saying, like no nigga well, when I walk in the club, we bigger than me, yeah. you know what I'm saying, it's either we all the same, or I'm the shit, yeah. so you gotta think, when Big Meech was there, and Jesus was there, Big Meech was who he was, and then Jesus was coming up, you know what I'm saying, so I feel like, you know, they be having a lot to play in me and his relationship, but well, he had a lot to play in me and his relationship on how he treat things, because me, me and you can have all the same chains and everything. You not taking my shit. You can't. What's for me is for me. What's for you is for you. But long story short, yeah, I fuck with Jesus. Like, I fuck with Jesus because he didn't have to fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Regardless if he fuck with me and really put his energy into helping me bust or make it, he didn't have to fuck with me at all. So whatever came with fucking with Jesus, I see him today. You know what I'm saying? And it's still my dog. Like I said, I made more money. I made so much money. Damn it, Jesus is unreal. <laughs> he paid two more. He paid two more. Yeah. That's why I said, when I saw that nigga, that's why me and Trey, that's what, man, listen, me and Trey's story is the way it is because of what he did. He he don't know that what he did, but it, you would get it. I'm 24, 25 years old. You know what I'm saying? I ship my Lambo to uh, Atlanta. Everybody like, who is this little light skin nigga? I'm, I'm stepping. I'm having my way. Now, mind you, I done killed Houston already before I left. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was dominating this motherfucker. So I get down there, and Jesus wanted to do jump on the club. Nigga, come on. You know how I feel? They got my Wonderland. I'm like, whoa, this nigga Jesus want to be on the club. You know, we get money, but Jesus was still our idol in the trap. You know what I'm saying? So when the nigga said that, I was like, hell yeah. So we, I'm talking about that night, I called T.A. Nigga, I need this now. I don't care what you doing. Yeah. I need the instrumental. Boom, we sent it to Jesus. Boom. He pulled back up to the club. He already recorded that motherfucker. I'm like, damn. So we burn out to the That's why when this shit happening right now, I don't care if it's Sauce Walker, if it's Fast Lane, if it's Rizzo, if it's whatever. If they call me, or if, I, if my words can help change their life, right. I'm going to do that. I know how hard it is to make it from the struggle, nigga. That's why I know niggas ain't really come from it like I came from. Because just like you, if all I got to do is do this interview and it'll change your life, I'm doing it. Because it's nothing, bro. It don't cost you nothing to keep it real. But what if I just be like, oh, nah, he ain't ready to chill. Like, no. Nah. Or he just, no. Nah. You don't do that because this Houston, bro, at the end of the day, we in Atlanta yet. We ain't got no bunch of millionaires out here. Niggas is risking their life. So, nigga, if you got to do something to change it, even if I didn't do nothing for you, maybe your son might get rapper later. And I help him. Or maybe my son help your son. We don't hold no nigga, nigga don't know shit like that. You feel me? So that's why, for me and him, that's why our situation was the way it was. You know what I'm saying? That's why. I mean, we good now. But it's respect, you know what I'm saying? But I had to, he had to understand, like, nigga, I come from this shit for real. So unless you ready to die about it, I don't want to talk about it. Right, I'm right. ready to die about it. That's why I fuck with the sauce when he said that. You got to be ready to die about it. Nigga, any day, today, tomorrow, it ain't going to change. And my respect on the line, I'm ready to go with that pistol right now. And you've been in the streets most of your life. All my life. You know what I'm saying? On the rap side, you think it was more dangerous being a street rapper or just being a street nigga? Shit, rapper. <laughs> rapper for shit show. Hey listen, <laughs> being a street nigga, you covered by the unknown. You know what I'm saying? Being a street nigga, I never got tried as a street nigga, ever. Like when I was in the streets just hustling. But when I started messing with music, you got niggas hearing this nigga talking about this and talking about that. They think, well oh, shit, I'm, they want to test that shit. They want to see if you really like that. But when you just a street nigga, you in your corner. That's why I tell you, like, salute to all the OGs in the city, because, you know, they only gonna get tested by people by that people that's the internal shit. Yeah. But with me, I was on the forefront. Like, I'm in the, I'm head first, so, like, I had everybody looking at me like, oh, he act like he this, so he wanna be this, he think he this, with that rapper yeah, shit, you know what I'm saying? And that shit was dangerous. That shit was dangerous as fuck, to be honest with you. Because I ain't even knowing who I'm beefing with. I'm beefing with a nigga because I got on the fucking internet and said, I'm the biggest shit Greens Point ever saw. And it's a nigga in Greens Point beefing with me, and I don't even know this nigga. Because he's saying that he don't know me. What? What does that matter? But had I not been who I was, I could have said that all day and it wouldn't even up. Right, 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 right. So, this shit, that, that rapper shit, dangerous, bro. And that's why I say, RIP to a lot of the evolving rappers, bro. Because, like, like I feel like Pop Smoke and, you know, Nipsey and a lot of these niggas that's dying, 
they dying because when you come up in the streets, you learn how to move. You know, like, you see, we ain't, I ain't, these niggas ain't have to come here. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that they know I'm gonna be out here in Greensboro, just standing here, yeah. they gonna pull up. <laughs> yeah. And best believe, they're here for a fucking reason. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, if right. something go wrong, I'm not by myself. Right. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, these niggas rich though, but they didn't learn how to move here. See, cause the more money you get, this niggas gonna die by that. You know what I'm saying? Just cause they, you can feed them. And that's why when I look at NBA Youngboy and I look at a uh, Kodak Black, I love these niggas to the death, but you can tell they ain't come from the trap. Cause they, they don't know how to translate with the money. They don't know how to move with the money. Like, how you going to jail for the guns? How you going to jail for the weed and shit? Nigga, I'm nowhere near big as them boys as the world. Right. But I'm not good at them. Yeah, but uh, Big Boss, yeah, my dog. Yeah, I did my motherfucking brother too. Yeah, yeah. before the end of the road. This is my motherfucking brother. I'll talk about, about like, hey look. Not one time, two Listen, time. the first time I met this nigga, no count. 2012. Uh, we was on a motherfucking yacht. Uh, Angela Simmons. Uh, Kerry, he is no a lot of motherfuckers out there. My dog pulled up popping this shit. And we step like this. <laughs> when we ballin', they gotta be rocking down the fall with us too. So like I said, these streets got some weird rules. Shit ain't shit ain't for everybody, man. But like I said, I watch a lot of niggas, baseball players, basketball players, football players, wanna walk these rounds, walk these shoes. But these shoes come with life and death. These shoes come with a lot of risk. And yeah, it sound good. I'm gonna put a hit on this nigga. Yeah, that shit sound good. But what about when them bullets flying back at you? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah you might get hit a ball. You might get shoot a ball. You can't duck bullets. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> certain niggas good at it. And it's an instinct. The longer you in these streets, the better your instincts become. And if you ain't in these in these streets, your instincts ain't gonna be up. And when them bitches get to flying, you who? What happened? Yeah, you did. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say like. When it come to this type of shit, man, if a nigga gonna ball with us, they gotta be able to fall with us. And that's straight up. It ain't up and down. Ain't no coming around and drinking out the bottles, fucking the bitches, and then when it's time to go to war, oh, I ain't with that. Yeah. You better get your goof ass on. <laughs> These street niggas over here, you know what I'm saying? That would come with being in the streets. That shit like right now. If something go wrong, you know, I don't, you're gonna have to take it there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, this one gonna be hard.